Whether you're running a business, working from home, or selling items through online sites, going to the post office to send out your letters and packages is a waste of time. Use stamps.com instead. You will never have to go to the post office again, no matter what you're sending, ever. With stamps.com, you can buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, using your own computer and printer. Stamps.com will give you a free digital scale that calculates the exact postage you need. There is no guesswork. Right now, Stamps.com has a special offer for my listeners. Use my last name, Moore, M-O-H-R, for a no-risk trial. $110 bonus offer includes a digital scale and up to $55 free postage. Free stuff. Yay. Don't wait. Go to Stamps.com before you do anything else. Click on the radio microphone at the top of the home page and type in M-O-H-R. That's stamps.com. Enter more. Do it. Hey, everybody. Hey, don't fast forward over this part. For real, i got to tell you something. Go to jmore.com and click the Amazon.com banner and go to Amazon and buy stuff for yourself. That's really what I want for you out of life is for you to buy things for you. It is helping the podcast a lot. And thank you, thank you, thank you. And tweet me the strange things that you purchased with photos or it didn't happen. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Don't I want to work with you a lot. Oh, yeah! Everybody seems to be ready. Are you ready for the next band? You waited the Fantastic Five. Here they are. The greatest rock and roll band in the world. The Rolling Stones. The Rolling Stones, everybody. The Rolling Stones. Wham! And then you got to hold that mic super tight to your mouth, your gorgeous mouth. I remember when that album came out and I got that home. Get your yayas out. Yeah, yeah, on vinyl, you know, back in the day. Speaking of vinyl, Alan Havey. Is our guest. Speaking of vinyl, this guy, uh, Joan Wolf, 1186, just bought vinyl records and a Mother's Day gift off Amazon.com through jmore.com. And this guy, uh, Slessler, through jmore.com, hit the Amazon link. I bought a box set of SCTV every episode. Better have my donuts. So thank you guys for helping us out. Alan Havey is with us. And you know what? It's nice. An OG, as the young rappers would say. You're an original gangster in this comedy game, motherfucker. Uh, thank you. That's that's Straight a lovely compliment. Up. G's up, hose down, motherfucker. How many <laughs> how many Letterman's? Have I just you did got? my tenth about a year and a half ago. Fuck. Yeah, and I started, but I started back in the NBC days. Is that because Eddie Brill knows that you're a middle of the road easy comic and you're funnier <laughs> than women? Uh, he took it. He took it in the ass on that. I I, I agree completely. In fact, uh, my that spot that I did October of ten. Eddie made that set. I mean, I, you know, I came with material, but he shaped it. He made that set powerful. And there's nothing like another comedian to look at you, a comedian that knows the room. And I'm talking about the Ed Sullivan Theater, that knows what's going to work, that knows the host, what the host likes, because that's what you're there for. Eddie Brill, for those of you listening, is a dear friend of mine, and I would assume a dear friend of yours. Yeah, I've known Eddie a long time. Was my neighbor, Neil Brennan's neighbor, when we lived together on St. Mark's Place. He used to host poker games. With, uh, Still does with William Stevenson and all the guys would come down and I didn't know how to play poker and they were like no then that's good and you should definitely join <laughs> Sit us. Sit down, Jay. Yeah, no, I don't know how to play. Great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Eddie booked the David Letterman. Show. You know, I talked to Eddie. I said we got to talk about this on the podcast and we never have. So it's I don't perfect. think he. You know, I don't think he wants to. We don't. No, get any, I mean, more hot I would water. talk about it. Yeah. with someone. Well, I'm the guy. Uh, you've done 10 Letterman's doing stand-up, Alan, right. Alan Havey of the David Letterman Show. Absolutely. Who, by the way, will be at the Borgata Theater uh, in Atlantic City July 1st. That place is the best. July 1st it. through the 7th. Something like really? Working there all week. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And you'll be selling merchandise after the show? My CD. I only have one uh, piece of merch, my is CD. Is it your CD or is it the Rolling Stones, Get Your Yaya's Out? Uh, side 2 is Rolling Stones, Get Your Yaya's Out. Side 2 is good. Yeah, yeah. Side two is Sympathy for the Devil. Oh, 
Paint it black. black. <laughs> Some fat cunt Love in the that front album. Row yelling out. You're the Rolling Stones. You know, we get tied up like, why is this person not paying attention? This guy's not enjoying my show. You're the Rolling Stone at Madison Square Garden. There's some fat drunk cunt. <laughs> Paint it black. Like, this show sucks because you haven't played the one song out of your catalog that I want to hear on my acid trip. Well, she was probably on Mescaline and Ripple. You know, back <laughs> back then, people didn't know how to, you know, drugs were kind of new. You Combos. Know? Right. And I remember friends of mine getting, uh, you know, like when I, my first concert was Grand Funk Railroad down at Pirate's World back in the day. And my friends were getting real drunk. I go, no, no, dude, we're going to listen to music. Yeah. You, you don't get drunk, you know, to go listen to music. Oh, yes, you do, Alan Havey. No, I don't. Old school doesn't. Maybe, you know, you take a couple of hits off the joint back in yes. the day. But no. Back in the day. Yeah, back in the day. Now now it's a one-hitter. Yeah. The pot now is 25 times stronger. It's, it's not so great. Uh, you sit on a toilet with diarrhea for two hours taking your pulse. And where, you go, wow, this is a great high. Where are you getting your weed, Jay? Uh, from uh, Ice Cube. Oh, my God. No, I don't know. From Grandma. We don't do it. You know, yeah. you, uh, you, when you have a baby, you can't smoke pot because all you do is check to see if he's breathing constantly. Yeah, it's he, true. You he can't. lays in bed, and you just look to see if his belly's coming up and down. <laughs> all right. You put the kids down. Your yeah. wife's asleep. You go, you know, you go watch an old movie, hit a J. All of a sudden, your kid has to go to the emergency room. You Fuck, can't, yeah. You can't get high when you have kids. Or if he doesn't have to go to the emergency room, your frontal lobe is consumed with what if he has to go to the emergency room. I can only imagine I have no children. You have no kids, but you yeah. got married at like 50. 53. You were 53. And I, you saw, I love – your Letterman sets are really good. I, I want to circle back around to Eddie Brill. But I love your Letterman set, your opening line on one of them. That I, I went back and I saw a whole bunch of them. But one you just went out and said, I'm, I'm so tired of being white. I've been white a long time. Yeah. I, you know, it used to pay to be white. When I was a kid growing up in the 60s, I go, oh, great. I'm going to be an adult white guy. I'll be on – Top of the ladder. Everything's gone now. It all changed. You're making talkies at Warner's. It's, it's over. <laughs> the studio system is out, kid. Yeah. <laughs> Send me a black, a Latino. And what's, who's the hot midget now? What's OJ doing? Can we get him a furlough as a villain? I have uh, college kids wanting to me. Yeah, all, all the girls want to go out with black guys. What do I do? I said, black pussy. <laughs> Th- there's your answer right there. You never had a black woman? Never had a Latino woman? And as soon as I say that, a man comes into the room. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed that it, it almost seems like being white? Now, I, obviously, we can't really complain about being white because oh is, no, if in America, over, if they, if you get pulled over, they do let you go. They don't even, you know. I got stopped once with a black hooker, and they arrested the hooker. And the cop looked at me and goes, "Go home." What town was this? This was New York City. How a long time ago? Obviously. A long time ago, yeah. Yeah. What ma- did you find at fifty three? And I wasn't. I wasn't soliciting her. We were just hanging out, you know, being buddies. Sure. You're just the- driving her home like Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> I just drove that hooker home, Alan Harvey. I gave her a ride. <laughs> David Freeze is my biological father. Um. So Eddie Brill booked the Tonight. Sh- oh, sorry. Jesus. Eddie Brill booked the David Letterman show, and he's a super friend of the comics. Like he's the guy that will go through your set with you. You just said he made your. Uh, 2010 he really set. he made he made he made the set. He really helped me shape it. I didn't want to close with something. He said, "No, that's your closer." I go, "Really?" And I didn't argue with him too much because I know he knows the room. So I said, "Okay." So I just listened to him. I had all the material, but he he kind of pieced things together for me. I said, "No, that's the way it should go." I said, "Okay," and it killed. It was my best set. Really? Yeah, yeah, my best set. So he's a guy that knows comics. Like you said, he knows the Ed Sullivan Theater. He knows what Dave likes, too. So you got to juggle what a 1,000 people like with what the host likes. Absolutely. That's a high wire act, man. That is. And here's the thing. If, you, if you're a comic, you fly to the Midwest. There's a house MC. He works that, that club all the time. You're going to go to that guy and say, how's the crowd? You're what at works? Penguins in Cedar Rapids. <laughs> yeah, wherever you are, you're going to talk to somebody who knows the room, at least I do, and say, what's the room like? What works? Who do I have to watch out for? Which waitress do must I avoid? Which <laughs> Who waitress? had sex with Charlie Barnett and Rick Avila? Right. I remember I did this club down in Alabama. This is years ago, back in the... Stardome? The dark... No, no, no. I forget the name of the club. They're all gone now. But uh, I remember one, the manager came up and goes, Donna fucks all the headliners. Like that, like that. So maybe Tuesday's not the day to do it. But if you don't find anything, definitely Saturday. For Donna. Yeah. 
And was Donna a nice I, enough? I, no, I, I didn't get to Donna. You. <laughs> <laughs> I like his, you know, he's got a really neat, that club owner. First of all, it's nice when the club owner sounds like Boss Hogg from, the, from uh, Dukes of Hazard. What better person to have your finances in his pocket? Oh, yeah. Donna's a real good-looking gal. She'll suck your dick, Alan. You know, Alan sounds a tad Jewy. <laughs> oh, well, listen. If you're from New York, you're a Jew. Yeah. When you go to the Midwest or you go down south. Fuck Midwest. Mid-Florida. Like yeah. the middle of Florida, they're like hillbillies there. Well, Florida used to be. You want to get paid in green or white back in the oh, day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Huge, yeah. I said, no. I said, you sure you don't want some white? I go, no, green. If I have the green, if I wanted to, I can get my own white. Yeah, I don't know if you realize green. how the color scheme works. Green begets white. Yes. White does not beget green. No. White loses green. Green with envy because you're out of white. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's how that would work. Uh, your wife, where'd you meet her? Uh, I met her at uh, Green Street. Back in the day, comedy club. She was a waitress there. That was way in like the yeah. West Village, right? A- Eighty four. Eighty four. A very tiny room, Green Street. No, no, it was it was a, it was a big room upstairs. Let it was finish. like a supper club. Let me finish. <laughs> a very tiny room, Green Street, uh, is the one I'm thinking of. That's not the one you're thinking of. Right, that's I'm a tiny of the room. Big one, Green Street. No, the the tiny Green Street. I had to hunch over. I couldn't fit into that club. Yeah, you're a tall bird, man. All, all the short acts would go in there. Yeah, Brad Williams, <laughs> Wee Man from uh, and uh, Kevin Hart. It was a, it was a just Kevin just, Hart wasn't born. He wasn't. No, this is back in eighty four. 1984, let me tell you what I was doing. 1984, were you on Letterman then? 86. In 86, NBC, you did it, NBC Letterman. Right. When he was on at 1230. November 13th, 1986, that was my debut. I watched you. Uh, I was a freshman in high school. Wow. I had just gotten a TV in my room, and I would stay up just to watch Letterman, because Letterman was like this super cool party that went down after everybody was asleep. This is after Johnny... Was off the, you know, Johnny would uh, say uh, goodnight, and then you say, okay, I, dad's gone. Now let's see what Uncle Dave is up to. Uh, well, you should do an hour and a half, and we realized that was ludicrous. <laughs> Ed, uh, Ed, could I get you an army cot? <laughs> Stay tuned for Dave. Uh, Alan Havey, fine young comic. We'll be out here in a minute. Oh, you ever do man. Johnny? Uh, that's, that's a subject of a one-man show. Uh, that Brian Koppelman and David Levine are producing called God's Camera. And it takes me, m- when I was eight years old, my father would wake me up to watch Johnny Carson with him. Is it, Whose one-man show is it? It's mine. Is it going on? And, and it goes from kindergarten to Carson. It goes from how I became a comedian, how I got into Carson. It is going up later this year. And we don't have a date yet or anything. Those are my homeboys. You're here yeah. because Brian Koppelman sat in that chair and said, could you get Alan Havey on? Alan Havey, he, I need to listen to this podcast when Alan Havey's on. You know what? You got to do it. And could you do more Louis Guzman? That fucking slays me when you do Louis <laughs> Guzman. He just has a little checklist of things he likes. Brian saw me open for Richard Lewis at Caroline's on 8th Avenue in 1986. Oh, and then he became a fan of mine. And every, anytime I would go to a club, whether it was Cambridge at Catch or the Comedy Cellar, he would sit up front with his friends. And after a show one night, I said, come here, kid. He was like 19 at the time. I said, here's my home number. Anytime you want to come to a show, let me know. I'll get you in, but sit in the back because I know who, you know. It's too fucking distracting. Yeah, because he was, you know. And I ran into him at a, at a uh, Met game, Shea Stadium. We just, we oh, run into each other. Oh, you poor bastard. It's fucking Met fans. <laughs> you dopes. Oh, no, no. I'm a, said more. I'm a Cardinal fan. We just went oh, to the okay. Met. Yeah, Brian's not a big say. Met fan. We used to go to Shea just because it was a shithole. Because it was like, hey, you want to go visit Bosnia? It'll be funny. There's bullet well, who's holes. your team? Dodgers. Oh, okay. I was. Let me explain. Let me, let me finish. Shea Stadium was awesome. Shea it was Stadium awesome was awesome in its awfulness. Yes. And I actually enjoyed it. But we used to rent the limo. And just do copious amounts of drugs and booze and just show up in those orange seats ah, in the humidity and go crazy. Uh, rent a limo? To go to yes. A, uh, uh, what am I supposed to take? The fucking Q train with the... Like the a, R. Like, like a fucking ham that's and part, That's Yeah, exactly. That's what you do. You, you get on I? the train and you toddle out there and you pay your dues. I'm a and fucking a li- big shot. Li- I'm hey. the dice man. I don't take the fucking train to the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> I ride a fucking black <laughs> vagina. I sit in it like a fucking vagina hammock, honey. Was that your guy when you were coming up? Was that your hero, Dice? D- 
I, no, I I love that album. Sure, it changed things a bit, you know, and uh, the misogyny was a welcomed uh, reprieve of everything else. You know, the, everything then was comics with suit jackets with the sleeves pushed up on the evening at the improv, yourself included. No, 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 uh-uh. <laughs> never wore the like, jacket, never wore the skinny tie. He's like, Not, fuck Never had the you, shag Tommy. haircut. No, uh-uh. I almost had him, you fucking brick. <laughs> it wasn't me. No? No, wasn't me. I hosted one evening at the Improv. That was it. I did Letterman. I did HBO. 